Hey everybody, so this is a lesson about using some options with the sample function. So in the last lesson we went over how to use a sample. Remember a sample is a piece of pre-recorded audio uh, that we can then play in Sonic Pi, so it's an actual sound or recording of a sound, a sound file, as opposed to synthesis of sound, which is a different technique that we've used. So we talked about sample, we looked at all the different samples that are already built into Sonic Pi. Uh, I'm not even gonna go through them all, but there's a lot, hopefully you played with a lot and got a sense of the different sounds. We also know that because they're pre-recorded audio, each sample has its own specific length. And then we talked about how to use the sample duration as a way to sleep for the exact amount of time that a sample lasts for before going on to the next one. So today we're gonna to look at ways we can change the pitch and the speed of our samples just to give us a few more options when working with them. So I'm just gonna choose the ambi choir sound here to work with, which sounds like this, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is look at how to change the pitch of our sample. So in any option that we're gonna use with sample, we always need to add a uh, comma and then we'll have this whole thing. These are a lot of options that we can work with, but we're gonna do pitch Okay, so pitch is gonna do just that it's going to change the pitch of our sample uh, Similar to like when we have play if you do play 60 and then play 61 that's gonna increase it the pitch by one uh, we're going to do the same thing, but not with like 60 and 70. We're just going to go by one number at a time. So if I start with zero, this is basically just playing the sample as is. Okay, so if I didn't even have any of this, it would sound the same. But if I do pitch one, okay, it is increases the pitch. If I do pitch two, it does it by two notes, it does it by three notes. Okay, now one thing to keep in mind when we talk about increasing the pitch or changing the pitch of a sample. It's not like if I were to play a note on the guitar and then I play a different note on the guitar uh, that I get two different pitches. So the sample is I recorded a note on the guitar and the sample's always just that one note on the guitar. So when we change the pitch of a sample, we are really just manipulating the digital audio file of the sample. We're not actually changing a note. There's some behind the scenes stuff that happens to change the pitch, okay? And pitch is gonna change the sample and keep that sample the exact same length. So what you're gonna notice happens, the way it has to work is, in order to keep it the same length, the, the audio file has to kind of be like stretched out and chopped up and all these teeny tiny spaces need to be put in between everything and so you start to hear it get a little more gritty you can kind of hear like a little buzz almost as we get higher and higher i'll go up to like 12. it has sort of very choppy gritty kind of texture to it that we don't hear when we have the original sound there okay so that is because to change the pitch without changing the length of the sample uh some sort of little magic needs to be worked there and gives it that weird sound. So I go up to 24. It really is no longer sounding much like the actual sample, but as far as the pitch of the sample is concerned, that is 24 notes higher than the original. And if I do 25, I'm gonna get an error message because this helpful, very helpful, uh, error message is telling me pitch must be a value less than or equal to 24 and it got 25. So I can't go above 24 when using pitch. Now, what if I want to lower a note? I just use a negative number and then that will lower the note. Okay, so same thing, you sort of hear the texture of the actual sound change because the speed of the sample is kept, or rather the length of the sample is kept the same. So uh, the, the quality of the sample is gonna change as we try and make it lower and lower, higher and higher. So you do 12 here, do 24, let's see 25. So actually 25, negative 25 is not the cutoff here like it is when we're going up. So I can do maybe 50, okay, 75. No, okay, so 72 is the cutoff there, negative 72. So let's just hear what that sounds like. Let's hear it again. 
okay it's barely can hear anything it's been so digitally manipulated that it barely sounds like anything now but you have that option if you want to do it and there may be some samples that changing it like this um, is going to have a different effect or will give it a different sound so every sample is going to be different so you can't necessarily say that every sample is going to sound just like this one so experiment with that as well okay the next thing I'm going to show you is where we're going to change the speed of the sample. So how long the sample will actually last for. Now by doing that, you can think of it like a record spinning on a turntable if you've ever seen that. Now if you spin the record a little faster, you hear a change in the pitch as well as the speed that it is playing at. And if you slow it down, you hear that as well. So that's basically what we're doing here. So rate is going to affect both the speed of the sample and the pitch. So the default for rate is one. So one is what it's gonna sound like without even writing anything. So don't write rate one because you it's nothing. It's not gonna do anything to change it, okay? But if I do rate two, this is now saying play the sample twice as fast, okay? So it gets much higher pitch, but you also hear it, it is much shorter than the original. So just to kind of give you an example of how that works, I'll do rate one, I'll do sleep, uh, I don't know, I'll just do two. I'm not gonna use sample duration just to keep things moving here. Okay, so you hear it, the first sample with the rate one sounds like it lasts for longer than sample with rate two. All right. Uh, so I'll just get rid of that. Let's try sample rate three, rate four. Okay. See how as we go, this is four times as fast as the original sample. So that's why it, it's much higher and ends much quicker. So if I were to do like rate 12, it barely sounds like anything. It's super short there because it's 12 times as fast. So even if it was like 12 seconds long, the original sample, we do it at rate 12, it's gonna be one second long. Uh, so you don't have to worry about the math or anything like that. But So how do we make it slower? Well, rate, if one is the default, if I were to do say 0 0.5, so that is half the speed of the original sample. So it's going to last twice as long. So if I did something like rate 0 0.1, So this is going to last much longer than the original version. And from what we know about pitch uh, and frequency, the faster something is vibrating, the higher pitch, the slower it's vibrating, the lower the pitch. So the slower things go, uh, the lower the pitch is as well. But it's not going to have that gritty quality like it did with the pitch option because uh, it doesn't have to worry about keeping the sample the same length. Uh, now, there's one more thing I want to show you with that, and that is what about a negative number, okay? So negative, if you think about it, uh, if the rate going forward is one, and as we get lower, it's going to slow it down, eventually we get to zero, what happens when we go into negative numbers? So we are actually playing it backwards. So to think back to the turntable analogy, if you were to take a record and spin it backwards on the turntable, it will just kind of play everything in reverse. So I could do it twice as fast and backwards. I could do it uh, maybe half as fast and backwards. So this creates for some very interesting possibilities and textures as well. Uh, so play around with the rate uh, and you can change the speed, you can change it, you can make it go backwards, lots of cool stuff there. So one other thing I can show you here is called uh, R pitch. Okay, so R pitch is kind of a combination of both rate and pitch, meaning that it will change the pitch by increasing the rate. So it's not gonna keep it the same length, but instead of saying, two is twice as fast, you could say two, and that would just be two notes above the original pitch, but it's using rate to figure that out. So if you wanna kinda of go by pitch, but not get that gritty sound, you have the option to do that. So if I do our pitch at zero, it's the same. If I do it at one, then two, three, then four, so you can kind of hear it increasing in pitch, just like we would if we were using the play function, but it's using rate 
to do that as well, which means that you're not going to get that same gritty kind of sound. Okay, but it is going to eventually, the sample is going to get shorter and shorter and shorter as you do that. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind, uh, especially when you're going to do rate, going back to that for a second. So let's say I do rate two and then I do uh, with the sample duration sleep, sample duration, and then I do M B choir. Okay, and then I do another sample, let's just say the dark whoosh, okay? So I will run this. All right, so seemingly there's nothing going on with that, but what we need to keep in mind is that since rate does affect the speed of the sample, uh, if I do sample duration and be choir without the rate, it's going to give me a different length than this rate here. So just to give you an example, let's do rate 0 0.5. So I'm going to make this sample longer, okay? But I'm going to sleep for the duration of just the regular and be choir, which would be at rate one. Okay, so those now are overlapping, okay? So if I wanted this at rate 0 0.5 to last for the same amount as the sample duration uh, of that at 0 0.5, I would need to include the rate in the sample duration as well, which would give me this. Right, so there it waited for the sample at rate 0 0.5 to finish. It gave me that full duration before it played the next sample. So something to keep in mind as well, if you're going to play around with rate and then have the sample duration go as well, that you want to have the rate match up if you want it to play all the way through, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna stop the video here. The next video is just gonna show one more thing that you can do with sample. Uh, as far as choosing a starting and stopping point. So you can check that out next.